So you have to understand what type of system that we are living in. And this starts with Genesis chapter one, two, and three, and the fall of man, right? We have entered into a curse, right? It says through the first Adam, sin has entered into the world. And so one thing that I really want to get across to you is that the Bible is showcasing two things. Who is God and what is he like? And part of learning this is learning what type of system we are in. And what type of system that we are in is that we have lost communion, fellowship, relationship with God because of sin. So I like to describe God and use metaphors and similes that the Bible lists out for us. And what he says in the, his word is that God is light. There is no darkness in him at all in James chapter one. And so if we look at James chapter one, if there's no darkness at all, what happened when Adam sinned is that we all are born into sin and shaped into iniquity in the womb, right? You do not have to teach children how to lie. You do not have to teach babies how to steal. They are naturally selfish because we are not naturally good, right? We're actually naturally evil. We are children of wrath. This is listed out in Romans. And then even Jesus in the gospel says, you are of your father, the devil, right? So when you are born because of Adam's sin, we are naturally not default in the kingdom of light. We are in the kingdom of darkness and we are children of wrath, right? We are actually enemies of God. This is why the Bible says you must be born again. And so part of the system is that the curse in Genesis 3 says that all the days of our life, we will have to work with the sweat of our brow and that basically our harvest will yield thorns and thistles, right? And uh, work and labor will be very hard and tedious. So I want you to look around you to all creation, right? Because of the fall of man, right? Sin has entered all of creation, right? Everything, we, we always think that only the curse was upon us, right? And so this is why we sin and why we do evil stuff, right? But sin is actually in all creation now because of the rebellion of the devil and the one-third of the angels, but also our own rebellion, right? And so when it says in Psalms chapter 53, by his stripes, we are healed, right? It says he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon it and like also our transgressions. Sin is number one, a sickness. Number two, poison. And number three, death. And so James talks about how the wages, I'm sorry, Roman says that the wages of sin is death. And James says when sin hath conceived, it breathes death. So everywhere that you see I'm just, we're just going to talk about the curse, right? The curse is in creation. And this is where you see natural disasters. Imagine the garden of Eden. It is sinless. There are no floods. There are no earthquakes. There is no tornadoes. There's no hurricanes. There are no natural disasters, right? And so this is the beauty of the gospel. It says that in Romans chapter eight, that all creation groans for the manifestations of the sons of God. And so what it says is that, and this is in the gospels, it says, lest a man be born again, right? He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so the gospel is that we repent and believe in Christ Jesus that number one, we will be adopted, no longer children of wrath, no longer enemies of God, but children of God, sons of God and children of light as he is light. So that is one part of it that number one, sin puts everybody into slavery and bondage, right? And so that type of bondage only brings death. But it says that we are in number one, the devil system. And so he is the prince of the air. When Jesus is being tempted in the gospels, he is offering all these things because all these things are under his power. And part of this is why we see that the Bible is trying to move us from 
a physical blessing in the Old Testament to a spiritual blessing inheritance in the New Testament. 